Hey guys, uh, I got another flash drive that looks like this. Those of you who follow this channel know that those uh, types of flash drives are very dangerous to keep your information on. Most of the time they're used for promotional purposes and are giveaways at uh, meetings, corporate stuff and like venues. Uh, universities, big companies have them to kind of like give away with some marketing material. More times than not, these devices when they come in uh, they have uh, components that are really low quality. Uh, low quality controllers, low quality NANDs. Basically these flash drives are being built out of scrap that exists on other devices and then they're put together for that kind of last breath of life. If you already found yourself in a position where you lost data on a device that looks like this, chances are it's nothing that you did Personally, it's uh, most likely the quality of the device itself that had failed you. What I wanted to uh, pay attention today in this video especially is what we have on the back here. The memory is not removable. We have to treat it as if this is a monolithic device. But how do we connect to it? Luckily for us, in this specific case, uh, the unit is built on CBM. 2093 and that's a chips bank controller chips bank controllers are not especially old ones like this are not hard to um, find uh, data sheets for online and we will have to refer to one of those data sheets online today most likely unless we can find a solution uh, somewhere along the board the first thing I would want to test is uh, whether or not this these connections are still um, you know linking up with whatever they need to be linked with but what I got here is um, multimeter I'm just gonna set it to uh, test mode for diodes and we're gonna just check out the connections so as long as everything is connected we should be hearing this beep and in the top right corner you can see the view that I of what I see in a microscope so I don't want to go ahead and test whether or not this pad connects to this pad and it does that's good we got our data lines here we got a connection there we got a connection there and hopefully getting 5 volt. Now we're just gonna check the ground and power pads make sure they're not touching each other just double check these pads here just just to make sure nothing broke off apply like a tiny bit of pressure on them so that's 5 volt going into the controller pad right there this is gonna be going to the NAND on this side yeah so we're getting 3.3 3 .3 heading to the NAND right there so the NAND is powered with the package uh, that I got from Ace Lab, I got a few of these adapters and I'm going to use uh, one of those adapters today. So what this is is a pretty much a, like a breakout adapter for, for NAND protocol uh, on monolithic devices. They really did think of everything. Even the task number slot is there. So uh, we will have to uh, remove the controller because controller is no longer needed Okay, now it's affixed. 
and we can even walk this in. I guess we can start. Okay, I, <laughs> I apologize, I filmed half of this breakout process um, from an angle that you can't really see anything. Sorry about that. that. This is CLE. This is our ground right there. Hopefully that's all we needed to do. It's the first time I'm using this adapter. So this is what we end up with. This is what it looks like after we finish. Let's uh, link it up to an adapter and see what we can do. goes in here like that and it sits in there this is the uh, box link it like this I forgot to add two more contacts which are pretty cr critical W E and R E yes uh, read and write enable uh, so we're gonna attach those and then we can start the, uh, uh, the actual work in the task. So when this is all connected and ready to go, we can actually uh, uh, plug it in again and open up our software. Right here we're gonna name the task and uh, uh, select the device that we're working with. If we want to work with the PC3000 device, we're gonna select that. Uh, this section is to indicate how many chips we're working with and what is the part number on the controller. That will help uh, to explore if previously there had been solutions for similar cases. And our mm, controller is CBM2093, so that's what we would put in there. Uh, over here is where uh, all of the work is going to be done this is the interface of, of the software read id is where we start and uh, reading the id is going to give us uh, a set of well pretty much the id of the chip uh, for which database has uh, specific parameters that describe how uh, the data has been written to that specific chip now we can read it out and there are two options on how the reading can be done it can be done direct uh, that's kind of like a um, on-flight uh, instant inspection and it can be read into the dump. If we're reading it into the dump, it saves it as a file on um, the drive wherever the destination path would be. This section here uh, allows us to choose what speed we want to read uh, the content with and we're going to select um, detect optimal and the tool will run several tasks in order to figure out what parameters would be what settings i should say would be best uh, to suit the needs of our chip though once they're detected they go into a custom uh, setup and now the chip is going to be read with those custom settings when it's done 
The tool will ask if we want to add this content to transformation graph. We'll say yes to that. Transformation graph is where the assembly of the data is done. And that's where all of the conversion elements uh, for data will take place. Luckily for us, our device does not have any mix and it's going to be a pretty straightforward case. First thing we start with is error correction. And once the error correction is detected, we will let it run and see how clean our read is going to be. If it's not clean enough, we're going to have to do a process called readout. That's where we reread those problematic sections uh, in order to bring it as close to perfection as possible. Uh, black blocks that you guys see, those are empty blocks. Green blocks are error-free blocks if they don't have a red border around them. If we build a map of all invalid sectors that we're left with, uh, we will see that we only have one. That isn't enough to worry about stuff. So we can move on and uh, set up the translator for it. That's the beauty about this specific tool is that it has a ton of different options for translations. Uh, translator is what's gonna help uh, to assemble the file structure as close to the original as possible. Arranging the uh, uh, logical image by block number, it's effective, but it's not perfect way to do this because uh, um, if the file system isn't captured, which often is the case with uh, assembly using the block number, uh, files that may get fragmented, such as video, will most likely end up non-functional. So translator is very critical to be, um, to be built in, in those sort of cases to address that specific issue. So once the translator is loaded, we see it gets us to the structure and we can explore it and save it for the client right away. Uh, this case is considered to be solved at this point. It was pretty straightforward and easy to do with this powerful tool. Flash drives like this come in sometimes with epoxy over the controller, sometimes they have epoxy over the NAND, sometimes they have epoxy over both. I uh, can recall if I've seen it personally in my own experience, uh, but I've seen a picture of it somewhere online where both sides had epoxy. In our case, we were lucky that the controller was uh, something that is available online and it's open source. We don't really have to do any R&D ourselves to find out what that pinout is. The schematic online, basically describes how the controller is connected through NAND protocol to the NAND. So removing the controller in our case was not just uh, to expose pads and make soldering easier, it was also to take out the potential component that can create extra noise and distort cleanness of the readout. So hopefully uh, you guys learned something new. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. The takeaway from this video, if you guys have these flash drives at home, don't use them for storage. They will most likely fail at one point or the other. And uh, if you're already in a position where it's no longer working and the device looks exactly the same, check the link in the description. You'll find our all contacts there and uh, we can help. So if you guys have any questions, as always, drop them in the comments below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you shortly in the next episode.